Hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. I just got back from an awesome toy show called It's a Toy Show, and I picked up some awesome stuff that I want to share with you guys. Let's dig into it. First up, I've got the Cobra Maggot. This is an awesome G.I. Joe vehicle from the late 80s. Uh, this is, belongs to Cobra. There's a driver to it called Worms, who I already have. Uh, and this vehicle is in pretty good shape. There is one little point of damage. There's actually a control stick right here that's snapped off, but the rest of it's in good shape. It's got all its parts, including this uh, satellite dish that gets broken pretty easy, so it's pretty cool. This vehicle is actually like two different tanks that hook together here with a hinge in the center, as well as this gunner station that can pop off, which can stand on its own. Next up, I've got some 90s action figures. James Bond Jr., Kwame from Captain Planet, and the movie White Ranger figure from Power Rangers the Movie. Oddly enough, James Bond Jr. is James Bond's nephew, not his son. He's got an action feature here, like a like He-Man's power punch. But he also has like a quick draw action with his Nintendo zapper there, so... Uh, is it supposed to be him like... Drawing his blaster? Do-do-do-do... With the power of Earth, I will teach the children to take a look. It's in a book. It's reading Rainbow. I know I have a movie version as well as a head flip in version of the White Ranger, uh, but this one's in pretty good shape, and he came with Saba, so I grabbed him even though he's missing his armor. I've been on an army ant kick lately. This guy was one of my favorites as a kid, the bazooka ant. And I already have the guy with the binoculars, but I picked him up as possible trade fodder for another army ant that I need. Time for everybody's favorite character, voiced by Peter Cullen. Optimus Prime! I mean, Murky Dismal. I picked up a sealed box version of Murky Dismal, one of the villains from Rainbow Bright. I loved Rainbow Bright as a kid. I especially loved the villains. Um, I had this guy as a kid, but I just... I couldn't leave this one there. He was only 15 bucks in the original package. just thought he was too cool to leave behind. I bundled this vintage Darth Vader TIE Fighter with Murky Dismal from Rainbow Bright. Got them both for a great price. There are some signs of wear and stickers peeling off on this ship, but it's pretty old. Um, kids, they didn't make it movie accurate. They actually used the TIE Fighter, center TIE Fighter body from the regular TIE Fighter and just put the big fins on it. Uh, with batteries, this should make sounds, but I haven't tested it yet. And, of course, it's got the classic battle damage feature here where you push the buttons on the side. And the wings shoot off. I picked up this deluxe coloring activity book from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I recently did a series of videos about some 80s coloring books. Check those out if you're interested. I was kind of hoping to do a whole series of them, but they didn't really perform that well. So, I don't know, I'm kind of rethinking it. But this has some awesome art in the beginning of different characters. There's He-Man and Rio Blast. Rock On and Stone Dart. There's some... You know, later characters that weren't in the Filmation show in this, which I think is pretty cool. Moss Man. Spike Or. Stink Or. Uh, and then as you get going, it turns into more of the activity book where there's things to cut out and puzzles to solve. This part's a, like a comic book here. There's one of the activities. It's pretty cool, and none of it's been colored in. Here's a few odds and ends. My friend Nick bought a tote of G.I. Joe parts. And in there was a Secret Wars shield. This is a lenticular surface here. And if you put the little cardboard pieces that came with those figures inside it, it works like a lenticular thing where you can see two different images on it. This is the cord to the Road Ripper, which I'm not sure if I had one yet from Masters of the Universe. And I picked up a Power of the Force 2 Hoth Rebel Trooper, because you can never have enough Rebel Soldiers. Here's the Magna Defenders Toro Zord from Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. I'm not sure if it was supposed to come with a minifigure of Magna Defender when he grows to put inside here. I know he should probably have his weapon, and I, I don't know what the hooks do. Um, they go, like, around him when it's in bull mode for the for the Magna Defender and his giant mode to, to hold onto, like handles. But I don't know if they retract or, or what you do with him when he's in Megazord mode. I picked up a carded Wolverine figure from the Toy Biz X-Men line. I loved this toy line as a kid. It was actually the first toy line where I collected every single figure in the initial wave. Uh, it took me a little while to get them all, but I had Wolverine, Storm, Archangel, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, Colossus, Juggernaut, Magneto, and Apocalypse. I also sent away 
for nine issues of X-Men for four fifty when I was a kid. My last three pickups of the day were Power Ranger bad guys. This figure right here is the Foot Soldier or the Putty type character from Power Rangers Time Force. He's a Cyclotron. Uh, they were robot guys. Kind of like the Cogs. <laughs> Next up we have Pexter. Pexter was a character from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He's from the, the, the line that everybody remembers. They, you had the head flipping guys and then you had all the monsters that had action features. He's got the posable wings. Uh, but his action features actually there's a button on his back. And when you push it. Or when you push it forward, sorry, had a malfunction there, makes his mouth peck. Pexter. Last but not least, we've got Eric the Barbaric. He's from the end of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He actually fought the Alien Rangers. They, they, uh, he, him and his brother come from the Kaku Ranger series, which is the, the, the Ninja Rangers that we call the Alien Rangers. We're just in a short miniseries. He doesn't really look like a Power Ranger figure. They, the very different construction from some of these other guys. He does have a little action feature here, um, where you can spin his buzz saw, which I think is cool. I love characters with buzz saw features, um, and he looks nothing like he looks when he grows in the show. Really, um, they kind of got souped up for their for their Megazord battle. Thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous toy review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos.